everybody, this is Garrett with Earth and Time, and today I'm in Calico Ghost Town in the Mojave Desert, just outside Barstow, California. And this is an old silver mining town, and this is a classic place where history and geology intersect. And the reason why this town is here is because of the geology, and it's really because of the geology related to what we're seeing here, and that is the faults that are in this area actually brought fluids through along with the volcanics and deposited large amounts of silver here which set up this town of Calico. In fact, we can look up on the hill and we can actually see tailings piles if I zoom in up there where these mines are at where they're mining silver out of this mountain. So what we see here in geology are what are known as chevron folds. And you can see they're chevrons just like you think of chevrons for a military uniform. They come up, they V, and they come down. And so this is a result of a fault that underlies us and maybe some other faults that cross through here. And these old lake deposits from during what we call the Miocene were deposited here and then there's a series of faults that developed. In this case, it's known as the Calico Fault, which is a right lateral strike slip fault. So you can think of something akin to the San Andreas, but much, much smaller. And what happens is that main fault zone actually sits out in front of us out there towards the valley. In fact, maybe even at the very end of these rocks, you see, you see some nice rocks there and then there's no rocks following it or nice outcrops and no resistant outcrops. The fault potentially runs right through there, but it actually has a splay or it branches up and off and comes under here somewhere. And maybe it comes out through one of these areas or a series of branches come out here. And I'll draw that for you so you can see what that looks like now. Okay, so I went to my trusted whiteboard so we can talk a little bit about the faulting here. So this would be like a cross section of the earth. So think about the earth as a series of layers and like you cut a cake and see a cross section. This is a cross section right through about where Calico is. So the town of Calico would lie somewhere in this area and we can see those chevrons up here. And what we have represented here, the red lines are the faults. So here's the main Calico fault zone here. The plus means this side is coming towards us. The minus means it's going away. And so that's how we know it's a strike slip fault. These little arrows going up and down, and I apologize, I got some water on here and it smeared my, my image. Uh, it means that this side's going up at the same time. So this one's going, uh, going um, towards us and up and it creates what they call a flower structure when strike slip fault. So you can see how kind of these parts of it branch out. So it kind of looks like a flower. The important part for us is this offshoot here off of the main Calico fault zone. And this is the fault that comes underneath those chevrons. So if I'm drawing those chevrons, it would look something like that. The pluses here are all the volcanics I was talking about earlier. So there's a bunch of volcanic intrusions in the area. And that's what I'm representing here. And just these other lines are just the regular stratigraphy. So you can think of those lacustrine deposits or lake deposits that we talked about that are part of the Miocene, part of maybe the Barstovian or Bar, uh, Barstow formation up here, the Barstovian time. So this just gives you an idea about a cross section, what it looked like a strike slip fault, much like the San Andreas with this side coming towards us, that side be moving away. And you'll see there's a whole series of these. When you get a whole series of them, that's when you start getting some complex geology and not just that you add in volcanics or volcanoes and it gets really crazy. The last thing I'll do is I'll zoom in here. And as this whole part here was moving this direction along this fault zone. So you see my arrows going here, this whole part's being translated this direction. The lacustrine deposits are running up against these volcanic deposits, which didn't have a lot of room to deform and so much like a carpet running into a door you end up crumpling the stratigraphy here and this is a nice little cross section of what the calico fault zone looks like and the mountains right by the calico area if you were going to take a slice through the earth there what it would look like so when that fault started moving these rocks were moving this way on top and as they were starting to move in this barstow, what's called a barstow formation, they ran into these volcanic rocks, which create all these beautiful colors here in the background. These rocks are trying to move along a fault zone going this direction. And just like if you're moving a rug right up against the door, they ran up into these more resistive 
volcanic units that couldn't crumple or change and the fault potentially had a hard time transitioning through it so what it does is it just crumples the earth going back and so you end up with these wonderful beautiful chevron folds and these really are world class So if we look up towards the mountain as well, we'll see there's a lot of different colors up there. Now that's a combination of both faulting and volcanic. So over 10 million years ago, there's a series of volcanoes that, that erupted in this area. And actually Calico Mountain that you see proper is a result of one of those. They allowed a setting of topography to allow some of these probably lacustrine, these lake deposits that have been all crumpled here to be deposited. I'm gonna drive down there and see if we can get a little bit closer to those chevron folds and take a look at what some of these lake deposits or what we call in geology, lacustrine deposits look like. Before I get to my car and drive down, I wanna show another view from another vantage point up here. And I mentioned this being a world-class site. I know there's professors, geology professors and geology students that come from all over the place, all over California, all over the world, just to come here and take a look at this amazing outcrop. Now, what else is interesting about this? What else is interesting about this outcrop is actually these lacustrine deposits that you see actually make up a specific time and are what they call the type locality for a specific time in geologic history. And that's known as the Barstovian in the Miocene. And that's actually named after these, this Barstow formation that we see here, this formation that we see going across and it's pretty rare as a geologist to be able to come somewhere where they actually named a time period after a certain area. So many of the names we have, like Devonian or Pennsylvanian or Mississippian, these time periods are named after places where they describe the rocks from that period of time or some distinct feature. And we happen to have these right in front of us as well. Not only are they amazingly folded from a structural point of view, but it's a very important spot from understanding geologic time. Really, really cool to be standing here and seeing this. All right, I made it up to Lookout Point, and you can see the whole town spread in front of us. But what's really nice is I can pan around and show you the greater area, including, check out the train coming. And we can talk a little bit about the geology and where we're at in the world here. So we're in the Mojave Desert one of the large desert regions in the southwestern U.S. and this is known as Calico Mountain and it gets that name because of the various colors that you'll see. Even in the mining tailing piles you can see how there's variability in the colors hence the name Calico. Now these big tailings piles are from the silver mines that were operating along this hillside including the King Mine which is the largest silver producing mine in the area. If we look down this direction, and you all know I love my rocks, you can see how altered and deformed the rocks are. Now this is a result of some late volcanoes that came into this area and intrusive volcanics that came into this area that altered the host rocks that were here, which, was, which were a series of lake rocks known as lacustrine deposits. And when those igneous bodies came in, those volcanic rocks came in, they actually helped deposit the silver in this area and created some of these amazing colors that you see. And you can see the multitude of colors going out. Now, some of the colors you see off in the distance this direction are all related to the lacustrine or, or late lake deposits that are here. In fact, they actually have a geologic time known as Barstovian which is named after the town of Barstow, which just resides over the hills over there. And it was named after this area. And we can see a really nice view of some of those deposits that actually have been folded in what we call chevron folds. Now I did another episode on chevron folds that you may be able to see where I was out in the Appalachian Mountains, but here you can really see how they've been crinkled there. And why are they crinkled there? Well, it turns out there's a big fault that comes underneath here. It's called a thrust fault coming up. And that fault's coming off of the Calico Strike Slip Fault. So this is a fault similar to San Andreas that's much smaller that runs right at the front of these hills that we can see in front of us. That, I apologize, I was blocking as we were looking out there. But that's where the fault would run. And from 
front of those hills and come through and we kind of see where things change out here and that's where the calico strikes up fault is coming into the section and there's a branch off of that that comes from a depth and what we call a flower structure and it creates this crinkling here or the chevron folds I zoom up on the hill, you can see all kinds of tailings piles. So there were many, many mines here. And actually, I'm not sure how many. We'll go down in the museum here and see if I can try to remember how many mines and how much silver was produced out of this area and how much of that borax or, or soap products were produced out of here as well. And here's a map, which I've actually don't think I've ever seen this before. The Calico Mines from 1881, when silver was first found here, to 1896. And it says, in the 15 years here, they found about $86 million of high-graded ore. And there were 10 major mines. And here's where the 10 major mines were. So we're sitting here in Calico. And you'll see on the north end of the street where we saw those tailings piles were the Silver King. You can see Red Cloud, Zenda. And you can see they actually worked away from the main town and each of these areas would have a group that either lived by those mines or they'd work in and out. We can walk in and learn a little bit more about mining and so this is I think one of the original buildings and indeed it is it dates back to 1887 the Zinda building it was the Zinda gold mining company and they have banners in here talking about how they did mining some of the big operations, look at that. Imagine how much timber that took and getting timber in here was not cheap. And we even get to have a quick geology lesson. So here's the geology of the Calico Mining District. This is so exciting. I'm like a kid in a candy store now. So you can see where we're at here. So uh, we're over in Calico's here. LA is off down to the south. So you'll see the little inset image there. So we're right along what's known as a calico fault, which is a right lateral strike slip fault, but it starts branching in this area. And this shows a great map of, I was talking about the fact we're standing right in front of the, the fault zone there, and you can see right where we're at. So there's the calico fault zone, this right lateral fault zone. And because we're along that, you end up having these big folds associated with some of the offshoots of that main fault. In fact, here you go. So they have a piece of the fault here that, that comes through. And actually, there's another fault that comes at depth that comes in here as well that helps buckle or crunch all of these lacustrine rock units together. So the Barstow formation, that Miocene formation that they also get the borates out of. And they're all getting crunched up against what is known as the pick handle formation, which are a series of volcanic rocks that are associated with the mountains that are right behind us. The other thing I mentioned is that they mine borates here as well. And borates are used for things like old soap products, um, borax, maybe people are familiar with. It was in old, they use it for old washing machines, washing clothes, cleaning supplies. And this was a major area for that as well. In fact, as silver started dying out, they started mining borates out of Calico, which helped really keep the town alive. So you had both silver and borate mines going here. And one of the things that was very famous here were the old mule trains that would come through here. And they call them 20 mule trains, if anybody's ever heard that term before. That was related to these borate mines hauling their borate so they can take them out and actually make borax soap out of it. Or borax laundry agents, what they called it. And here's even a little geology lesson. I love it. So it says borate minerals such as borax, culminite, and ulixite are sedimentary deposits called evaporites that form in hot, dry environments through repeated cyclic evaporation of seasonal playa lakes. If you remember, I talk about the fact that we're in a lot of the rocks we see are these old lacustrine or lake deposits. And here, they're in what's known as the Miocene Barstow Formation. So this is a world-class site and actually has its own geologic time that's named after this area of Barstow that these lakes were being in place and that's where this borate culminate and ulixite comes out of you can come learn a lot more about calico and the history here and more about the geology here as well and about mining in general mining is really what opened up the western united states and it's very important to the history here nice piece of silver ore and you can see this dark color associated with it 
and the kind of the rusty look it has. So this is the Maggie mine. It says it's a glory hole. They said a $65,000 glory hole. Well, that doesn't sound like a whole lot of money, but back in the day, $65,000, I'm sure would be the equivalent of millions now. But this is where the Maggie mine was. And actually, you can take a tour through this, but you can't access it from this side. You can see where someone started a mine. Maybe they thought they had a vein of something, but it just didn't go very far. They didn't find what they wanted to. And I can tell you from being a geologist, they probably saw this crack right here. And they thought, well, where you see a lot of fractures or cracks, that's often where the silver would be deposited along. And they probably started digging back, realized that there was nothing there that was indicating silver and they stopped and maybe they branched this direction as well because they were seeing some of this rusting or iron color that you all can see here. And these are all indicators for folks to think about, you know, could there be some kind of mineral deposit there? So now we're getting up and close to those folds and what is known as the calico member of the Barstow Formation. And so this was deposited about 17 to 19 million years ago. So these lake deposits are made up of alternating sandstones and mudstones and shales. So knowing they're lake deposits, one of the things I wanna see is, do I see some extra evidence of that? Do I see shales? Do I see something interesting? Like these look like these could be mud cracks and maybe some little algal mats, something else going on in there. And so we can start putting together a story about what kind of life lived in this lacustrine deposit. In fact, I believe they found various types of other animal, mammals and bugs and insects in some of this. And I don't know exactly where that's at. I just wanted to quickly share this with you because it's such a geologically amazing place. And people literally come from all over the world to come take a look at this calico member, the Barstow Formation and to see both this thick lacustrine Miocene deposit as well as they come and take a look at the folds that are here because from a structural point of view or from a faulting point of view, it's really an interesting story and something most people don't know much about. Hey everybody, thank you for joining me today to check out the geology around Calico Ghost Town. I hope you learned a little bit. I definitely learned a lot. It was really fun going back to my old, my old stomping grounds and being able to explain some of the geology there and also learn about some of the geology there with you all. It's been a long time since I thought about what was happening in that part of the world. Uh, with that being said, if you enjoyed this video, please remember to subscribe, give this video a thumbs up. Please leave comments down below, um, suggestions of other places to go visit in the area or just say hi. So with that being said, thank you all again and take care.